across the waters to Ireland, and they're certainly switched on there. Um, our next speaker is, is a gentleman um, from Ireland, uh, John Darby, and he's going to tell us about what's going down in Ireland. Um, the bottom line is, is uh, there, of course, is the, the bankers have virtually bankrupt the country, and now they're expecting the Irish people to bail them out. So, uh, John, <coughs> come on board. Welcome to John Darby. Okay, thank you very much. You can see the image now. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, a pleasure to be over here, as always. Um, uh, I'm from Ireland. I've got uh, the British accent because I was born and bred over here, as many of you know. Um, I come from an Irish family, so I've been over there for about seven years now. And um, Ireland has its issues, um, exactly the same as what you have over here. Some are different, uh, some are very much the same. Uh, but what I want to do today is to explain to you the uh, hierarchy in Ireland, the hidden government hierarchy that we have. Um, Ireland is supposedly a republic, and, uh, but unfortunately, whereas Ireland should be uh, ruled by the people, uh, it's actually ruled by um, oligarchies, um, who basically I'm going to be talking about today, who are directly controlled by the IMF. Now, um, I've been uh, talking to uh, somebody that's quite high up in the private medical sector in Ireland uh, recently. He was uh, one of the uh, two brothers who set up the Black Rock Clinic in Dublin, the Galway Clinic, and uh, Hawk Private Clinic. Um, these are hospitals that are worth hundreds of millions of euros. Basically, um, uh, I've actually been given information which uh, is implicating a few well-known people um, in the actual control uh, of the government. In fact, the government hasn't been in control at all, ever, really. Um, we have two political parties. Um, well, they're one party, really, a little bit like over here. We have the left and the right side of the same coin. Uh, Fina Gale and Fina Fall, who uh, basically have been uh, vying for power with each other since the Civil War. We also have uh, Sinn Féin. Um, but again, these parties are pretty much controlled by um, the same financial oligarchies. Um, this is the Black Rock Clinic I was telling you about. Now, in Ireland, what, uh, what's been happening in recent years, there's been quite an insurgence of private medical health care, which has been something which uh, uh, Ireland has prided itself on. Um, in the engineering industry, for instance, the pharmaceutical industry is, uh, uh, are getting quite, quite involved. And the pharmaceutical in Ireland is, is uh, basically replacing what Ireland should have had as far as its natural resources are concerned. And this is the point that I want to get to now. Ireland should have been the bread basket of Europe as far as oil and gas is concerned. We've got literally potentially trillions of dollars worth of oil and gas under Ireland and that oil is all being robbed. We also had a fishing industry at one time, the best in Europe. That's been robbed. There's a sugar industry, that's been robbed. The topsoil on the land in Ireland was thicker than anywhere else in Europe and that makes a big difference. The arable land in Ireland is unsurpassed but it's all gone, it's all been given away. It's been taken away, it's been given away to financial oligarchs like the Rothschilds, like Royal Dutch Shell, have been handed it all, and in place we've been given um, unstable industries like the pharmaceutical industries. But nevertheless, there were entrepreneurs that have actually set up hospitals like this, um, and basically, what we have is a structure here which has been given to me by this particular person whose name is uh, Joseph Sheehan. And he basically explained to me how the oligarchy starts, how the actual structure starts. You have the IMF at the top of it all, controlling the whole lot. Now you have money from the IMF, and you have money coming from the, um, the EU, from Frankfurt, where it's always come from. That's the financial, the, the fractional reserve system started in Frankfurt with Rothschild family, and it's still been issued there now through the, uh, 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 the European Central Bank. So you have the IMF and the European Central Bank. Basically, what their job is to do the bottom line, what their job is to do is to actually uh, 
create what's known as credit without asset value and convert that into national uh, resources okay, um, and productive business. So what they do, they issue credit. Now there's a difference between credit and money. Okay, money is money, money is worth something, but credit is just uh, a means of uh, being able to enrich yourself with physical stuff, but with not real money. So they actually issue this credit to the government and to the banks. The government basically used this money for um, pensions, education, and what have you. Um, and the banks are giving this money, for, uh, uh, like the Allied Irish Bank and the Bank of Ireland, they were, they were giving money ever since 1982 for mortgages and what have you. Um, but these banks then got more and more in debt. The government got more and more in debt. The Anglo-Irish Bank um, had been uh, given money since 1982 to actually invest in Irish property and to actually give mortgages. But the key point here is the Anglo-Irish Bank have been actually giving money to certain insiders. Now these insiders, most of them are known as a group called the Drum Condra Mafia. It's the Drum Condra Mafia that control Ireland. Okay, now, if I just go forward again now, these are the two main guys now who the IMF payrolled about 20 odd years ago. They payrolled to set up this group called the Drum Condra Mafia to take control of the Fianna Fáil political party. Okay, these two people here, Dermot Desmond, he's one of the main stock, uh, shareholders in uh, Celtic, he owns about 37%. He owned London City Airport at one time, he's owned shares in Manchester uh, United Football, he's got shares in it, he's a horse racer, um, he owns um, uh, many uh, key winning horses. Uh, he is the fourth richest man in Ireland, he's a multi-billionaire, uh, Dermot Desmond. And we have Larry Goodman, who's um, a beef baron, um, one of the wealthiest men in the world again, probably the most wealthiest man in Ireland, and the most corrupt man in Ireland. The pair of them are the most corrupt people in Ireland who are payrolled, bankrolled by the IMF to actually set up this mafia. Um, Larry Goodman basically, um, and Dermot Desmond, work in very different fields. They come from very different backgrounds. Uh, like Larry Goodman, I mean, as, as you can see from the name, he's actually a Zionist Jew anyway. Uh, the background he comes from is a land owning background. He owns massive tracts of land across Ireland and he owns virtually the whole beef industry across Ireland. Um, whereas Dermot Desmond, he basically is involved in building and what have you, and uh, you know, massive superstructures and, and what have you, London City Airport, you know. But they've basically come together and created this, what's known as a Drum Condra Mafia. And the Drum Condra Mafia took control of the Fianna Fáil party and put the Prime Ministers, as we call them here, but the T-shirts as they call them now, and put them actually into place. And they got to control the whole Dublin. Everything was under control of this, of this group called the Drum Condra Mafia, and it has been for the last 20 odd years. Okay, but it goes further than that. The whole of Ireland was controlled by them. Okay, now the members of this Drum Condra Mafia were able to get loans from the Allied Irish, uh, sorry, the Anglo Irish Bank, which is now wholly owned by the government, were able to receive 100% loans with no payment, with no down payments whatsoever, and they could. Um, buy up businesses, start up businesses, but if those businesses went into debt, like developers in Ireland built um, uh, housing estates, which are now turned into ghost estates, okay, those developers are having those developers in their, their, their debts taken over by an organisation called NAMA, the National An uh, uh, Assets Management Agency, okay, and all of those assets then go into the government, so the government is stealing the assets of the people, so this is one way where all the assets are being fleeced from the Developers. But these are certain insiders and drum contractors, they are immune from having any of their assets taken off them. They look after themselves, they've actually set this thing up so that they are totally immune. And as a result of that, these insiders, this relatively small group of people, own 80% of Irish productive industry. And the majority of people in Ireland have not got a clue. Put it this way, only 2% of this world water is fluidated, okay? Most of that 2% is Ireland, okay? Hardly any of British water is fluidated. 
It used to be in Northern Ireland, but due to a, a Walter Graham and certain other people, that fluoride has now been removed from the water. But the Republic of Ireland is nearly 100% fluoridated water. People are dumbed down. And their world is being robbed from beneath their feet, quite literally. Um, if I, oh, just, I just want to take you back a little bit now to here. Now basically we have uh, the debt that the government are building up, which is now just the government debt on its own is 100 billion euros, which doesn't sound an awful lot by British or United States standards, but it's only 4.5 million people in Ireland, a very small population. There's 100, million, 100 billion euros debt, which is increasing by between 20 to 25 billion, uh, 20 to 25% per year. Okay, so a quarter of that per year is increasing by, okay? And this is totally unmanageable debt, and again, this has been charged to the taxpayer. Um, so all of it, like I say, has been charged to the taxpayer, and the government are putting up taxes all the time, as they are over here, to actually extract that out of the people and put it on the most ridiculous taxes that they can possibly think of. And people are just accepting it, and there's no outcry. There are people that are crying out, but the vast majority of people are not sure what they do. <coughs> Do. This is the way that the IMF are robbing absolutely everything out of Ireland by lending money down, down through the banks, down through the governments, okay, making it so that the banks are collapsing, so that bailouts have to be paid. So the government are paying, the, 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 the government are borrowing money of the central banks, of the IMF, of the European Central Bank, who are owned by the same families as we know, mainly the Rothschilds, okay, to bail out the likes of the AIB and all the other banks who are owned by the Roth trials, and it's been charged to the taxpayer. It's been happening in Africa for years. Absolutely, and Mexico as well. Yeah. Okay, and this is what they do. They will lend money to the government, knowing the government are going to default, because they want you to default. So we're having political parties now, independents, saying, yes, the government have done wrong, the government haven't done this right, we've got to default, we've got to default. Well, they've put us between a rock and a hard place, because if we don't default, we're slaves. But if we do default, they take the collateral, the gas and the oil. We have more gas and oil than anywhere else in Europe. We should be providing oil to England and everywhere else, which we are, but we're giving it to them. I'll show you the map. This is the second famine in Ireland. If you can see that, these are the pipelines around Ireland, taking the oil from Corrid and certain other places. And where I live in the west of Ireland, you have what's called the Log Allen Basin. There's potentially trillions of euros worth of gas Okay? They're already laying the pipelines to remove it out of Ireland and pump it into the UK grid. Now we don't deny the UK gas, but you know, pay for it. It's been robbed off of the Irish people. These are high pressure pipelines that are built under housing estates. Okay? And people have no option, they have to accept it. Shell, oil, who are receiving all of that. In Ireland, you won't find Shell petrol stations anymore because they've covertly changed their name to Topaz. So if you go to Ireland, you won't see Shell petrols, but you see these beautiful Topaz stations. That is Shell. They've rebranded themselves in Ireland because they can't even show their face. But they're robbing it from beneath our feet. Um, that's a nice little picture I found on, uh, on one of the sites. Um, let's just go back. I've only just put together this, um, this PowerPoint very quickly, so it's a little bit all over the place, but I'm, I hope that it does give you the picture a little bit. Um, so these are the main guys, like I say. They, fu they funded and drunk, they developed the drunk contra mafia to, uh, for control of the phenophile parties, using the Rockefeller principle of nourishing them, placing them in key uh, government or civil servant positions, like secretaries to departments, working through Molesworth Street. Because in Molesworth Street, you have the second biggest and oldest Masonic lodge in the world, right next to, there's the house, right next to uh, the Irish government buildings. There is a tunnel going from the Molesworth Street Lodge into the government buildings. Okay? The first biggest Masonic Lodge is in England, in London. Second is in Dublin, believe it or not. This is where they're getting their orders from. It's all Masonic, it's controlling everything. Um, every facet um, of, of uh, Irish society and Irish life is uh, uh, coming from Molesworth Street. And these are the two most evil and corrupt people that you can possibly imagine. He says down here now exposed them as, as their ownership of 80% Irish industries was bought by Anglo-Irish Euros. Uh, none have put their names, uh, 
None put into their names and 100% leverage. In other words, where they borrow money from the Anglo-Irish, they are leveraging that money. They're using that money and they're going and getting it. If they borrow, say, 10 million, they're going to go to another bank and say, we've got 10 million here, can we borrow 100 million? Okay, so the debt is just going up and up and up and up. And again, it's being charged to the Irish taxpayer. And so we have to save Ireland from this uh, the second financial famine. It's quite interesting. Dermot Desmond is one of the two men that is uh, intent on collapsing Ireland to the ground. And there's a funny twist to this story because there's one man in Ireland who many have said can save Ireland, okay, because of the amount of people he's waking up. And that's Jim Corr. Jim's become a very good friend of ours, he works with us, we've done a lot together. Um, and uh, he's in a very awkward position as well, because his sister has recently married the son of Dermot Desmond. So that's... I can even closer than that. Now, uh, I won't dwell on that subject, but it's just amazing how these twists are. The very man that can save Ireland is sort of related to the man that's actually collapsing Ireland. So, at this moment in time, we have, we have a situation now where uh, we've got the census coming in as well. Uh, the census uh, in Ireland is April 30th. I uh, emailed the Central Statistics Office and asked them, can you tell me who is running the census? Would it happen to be Lockheed Martin, like it is in the UK? They emailed me back and I said, no, it's CACI UK. So I checked out CACI UK and I found out that it was a wholly owned subsidiary of CACI International of the United States of America. And they are, a, uh, they are a military intelligence data collection company who have been implicated in uh, sending our staff to torture people in Abu Ghraib. Okay. So, so it turns out that uh, CACI have been running the censuses in Ireland for the last three censuses. And they were running them in England up until this year, when they changed to Lockheed Martin, who is a strategic partner of CACI. So, as we can see, like I was saying earlier, this whole thing is global. We've got the whole of Europe, Ireland, England. All of this information now that they're collecting off of people, and not only that, at least the British government, treasonous as it is, Treasonous as it is, are only going to fine you a thousand pounds if you don't fill up your census. When I say only, I'll say that because the Irish government, if you don't fill up your census, they're threatening to fine you 25,000 euros. Okay? So, you know, unless they've worked out a way of drawing blood out of the stone, I don't know how they're going to get that. But anyway, I turned away the census lady, other people have been doing other stuff, and Neil Foster, who I'm going to ask to come on next, who's the UK editor of the uh, Sovereign Independent, he burnt us uh, in the sink, <laughs> and he's put it up on YouTube, so you can check that one out. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, this is what's happening. We also have uh, another thing which is coming up, which no one knows anything about, because the mainstream media aren't touching it, and one of the speakers today is going to be talking about this in depth, is the Traditional Herbal Medicinal Products Directive, which is going to be coming into full effect Okay, um, on that's April the 30th actually, I've got the wrong way around, the census is April the 10th. Okay, the traditional herbal medicinal products directive is coming into effect on April the 30th. And this is where all herbs will be banned for medicinal purposes. Okay, and I won't go into too much detail, but if you want to uh, sell any herbal medicinal products, you have to pay between 50 and 100,000 euros per herb, per company. And to find out about how you do it, you've got to buy a booklet about that thick which gives you all the forms so you, you, so you can get a license to market these herbs that will cost £250, so you're making it pretty impossible. So this is happening across Ireland as well, again, that's part of the EU. So, as each country is um, basically becoming more and more uh, centralised around Brussels and around the IMF and what have you, and the police state is kicking in more and more, because yes, we do have a serious police state in Ireland, cameras are going up everywhere, like it is here, we have uh, also a situation there where we have companies like STT Security who are being used, and private military companies that are being used for security around the airports and around the um, train stations. Okay, they have an seeing eye on the back of their jacket. If you go to stt.ie, you'll see the staff that wear jack boots and big black things, the full gear, with an all-seeing eye on the back of their jacket, and they walk around in pairs around Dublin, Dublin, Dublin train station, and nobody bats an eyelid. 
So again, a tip toe totalitarian as we've seen that. Um, so yeah, the whole country has been destroyed by particularly these two people here, okay, who are running a mafia which is controlling the government and has been for the last 20 odd years. Okay, and nobody really knows anything about it. Now, I've only just found out this information regarding these individuals. Uh, the, the Drunk Contra Mafia has been quite well known for a while anyway, but I didn't realise up until a few weeks ago that it actually owns and controls 80% of my Dutch industry. So, obviously that's something that I'm going to be doing a lot of research into, and I'll give it to you when we, uh, when we do have more information. We have a number of movements in Ireland who are actually doing a lot of work, and like the sort of independent, um, like We Are Change Island, like Cheer the Sea, Free Men Island, uh, we have Info Wars Island. So there's a lot of people around now who are actually bringing the truth to people, who are actually um, bringing the news to the people. The Sovereign Independent website has actually, over the last two or three months, has actually doubled its amount of hits. So there's something happening now. There's something happening. People are waking up. We've been putting on events. Um, the last event that the Sovereign Independent put on uh, basically was a few months ago. We've got another event coming up now called the Master Plan, which we would encourage you to attend if you can, because uh, it's a one-day event. Um, it costs 25 euros, so I don't think that's too bad. Uh, again, Jim Cora will be speaking. Um, Walter Graham will be talking about the fluidation of the water supply. Uh, Alan Watt, we're going to have a live video feed of Alan Watt, so you know he wouldn't come over. It's very hard to get him to move out of uh, his environment, but uh, he's, good, he's given us a live video feed. Dr. Andrew Wakefield is going to be talking about um, vaccinations. Um, he was actually struck off, as many of you know, um, illegally struck off uh, for actually um, linking uh, vaccines to autism and the like. Uh, Luke Krukowski, uh, obviously he set up the whole We Are Change movement and it's a pleasure to get him over. Uh, but but uh, particularly uh, Richard Gage, who has uh, basically set up an architect and engineer to a 9-11 truth. So we've got a few different 9-11 people there now. But Richard Gage is a very, very eminent um, architect. He has been for about 20 odd years. And uh, most of you know who he is, so I don't really have to explain. But that's the next event that we're putting on. The last event we had, we had Ian Crane speaking there, um, we had, again, Jim Corr, we had various other people speaking there, and there's a lot of other smaller events going on all over Ireland. Um, where just evening events and what have you. There are also people that are printing a lot of flyers around Ireland, so the rhetoric, and this is what Neil's going to talk to you about in a few weeks' time. We need to get the rhetoric out, because as we're seeing all these lies going up on the, in the newspaper shelves, <coughs> Basically, skirting lies to people, telling people everything's okay, everything will be grand. We need to be counteracting that, okay? Because when people are constantly being told over and over and over again the same old things, they get brainwashed into it. You know how it works. But we have to counteract that, and that's what the idea of the sovereign independent. That's the idea of the UK colony. It was actually Brian Gerrish that gave us the idea of a newspaper in Ireland. This is why the, um, the, the sovereign independent exists, and we're, now, we're on our third edition now. So I always try to get people to have a look at um, not only relying on internet media, okay, because the internet may not always be with us, okay. We need to also print printed media, newsletters, flyers, things like that, and just give them out, just to get the rhetoric out, you know, just to, just so people sort of see, okay, new world order, okay, let's check that out, you know. Um, so basically, that's what we want, what we want to be doing, because if we only keep it on the internet, then it's only going to go round and round in circles and, and websites. And I've already woken up. So, so basically, uh, that's where I'm going to sort of leave it for the moment. And I'll pass you on to the. I'm the Irish editor, okay? Now, the next edition that comes out, um, the fourth edition that's going to be coming out in a couple of months' time, there's going to be an Irish and an English edition, so there's going to be some slight differences. And the UK editor is Neil Foster, okay? He lives in Edinburgh, and he'd like to say a few words to you, a few words of encouragement. And uh, well, well, thanks for your, thank you for your time. Um, yeah, basically, all I'd like to say, I mean, it's, it's great that there's so many people here, but there are also a number of empty seats. I think everybody here has to leave here today and make a conscious effort to try and fill these seats. Sorry, try and fill these seats the next time there's an event such as this. But the place needs to be full. And it moves.
groups on from there and also start with small events in your own areas, even 10 people, 20 people, it doesn't matter. Just start talking to people and spread the word. I mean, you know, our flyers, uh, whatever you can do to get the message out. I mean, local radio stations are the dullest radio out there. But they're very easy to get on because they just talk about cats and trees and all that kind of stuff. And as soon as they mention something, whether it's vaccines or this food or whatever, you can get in there. And they will try and talk over you and all the rest of it. But you just have your two or three points that you want to get out. <coughs> people come on, commenting afterwards, and saying, oh, you know that guy, really? And they start thinking. You get the websites out, they start looking. And that's where they get the information from. Now, there's a lot of talk about lawful rebellion. We need to keep it lawful. No violence, none of that. Um, nobody here wants the children, grandchildren, to see people hanging from lampposts. We just don't want that. Now, my solution, which up at the back suggested a location for it, is in um, Anthrax Island. Tower blocks for all these criminals that we're going to arrest eventually. And we send them out there. We can, they can have a test us. We'll fill it full of genetically modified food. We'll give them fluoridated water. All the vaccines, and the drugs, drugs and meat. Send the story. That's what you should do. Thank you. <laughs>